Now what started this all off was our challenge that we had last year of a candle holder. And I just had to come up with a fancy candle holder. What came into my mind was a candelabra like this that you see in the movies when they're going down the stairs in some mystery movie or whatever. And uh, what was the, uh, I turned some candles as well, which they don't fit real tight now because the wood was green when I turned it. And as everybody knows, when you turn green wood, it uh, changes shape later on. So these, these cups have changed shape a little bit. So it'd be better to do it with dry wood. But actually what this started out with as is a log about eight to nine inches in diameter, black walnut. And I just started cutting it up and uh, making the pieces. And uh, this is what came out of that one log. So it was interesting a lot. It was challenging and fun to make. But what uh, was, I guess, the, the, the thing that uh, people were wondering about the most was how did you get this curve in here? What is this piece and how does that do? So that's actually what I'm going to demonstrate today. And I'll explain some of the other pieces. But the, the curve in there, what... What I actually did was uh, made uh, a couple, well, yeah, two rings and cut them in half like this. And that's, that's what supports it in the middle. And I'll just uh, pass these around so people can get a, an idea. This is what we're going for. These are the, the rings that we are, I'm forgetting about the camera here, to show that what, uh, this is what we're after, what we're looking for. Um, so we can hand those out there. People can look at them. Uh, and as I said, wood changes shape when it's green. Uh, I'll pass this one around too. It's a little bigger, but that one, as it dried, you can see quite a warp in it as uh, we get up here and you can see yeah. the, the warp there. So we'll get one uh, on here. We'll see if we can get everything working. Using an easy wood chuck. And that is with just a screw center in there. And I put it, I just made a, uh, a blank that's just a little bit over six inches in diameter here across. The, the rings that I made were six inch diameter rings. And they were five eighths, uh, five eighths in inches in diameter as far as the ring itself, the size in the ring. And to do that, I just drilled a 5 8 inch hole in a piece of plywood, cut that in half, and that's my template to be able to put on there as I turn and see where am I at? Am I getting it in the right, uh, right dimension? Now, there are many ways that you can go about this. You can, if you want to do it so that you don't have much sanding, uh, I've found using a gouge will do that better than a carbide tipped tool. So I've got uh, these two here. This is a 3 8 inch Ellsworth gouge. And then this one is an easy wood tool um, detailer. And I started out doing them with the Ellsworth gouge, which does a nice job. I'm just going to even it up on the outside here. Does a nice job of uh, evening things up that way. Just get that evened up a little bit. I'm only going to be using that outside part of it here. Ah, here we go. And that is you know, just five-eighths of an inch that I can mark that off out here and in here. 
just to give an idea of where I'm going for it. Now, as I said, you can use the, the gouge here to cut, and it gives you a, a smoother cut so that you'll have less sanding. But it does take longer. So I do that just to kind of show you that you could use a gouge to go at it that way. I'm actually going to use the Easywood tool today so that the demo doesn't take as long as it would take with that. The carbide tool is really good for getting wood out of the way quickly. You can see you can really go in there and get after it. And there's my mark. The only disadvantage to this is you are going to have more sanding at the end because you get more tear out uh, with it this way. <coughs> but if I go in here, get this wood out of the way, like that, and uh, round it off so that I get that ring going there. And go both sides really to do that. And as you work along, you use this just to see, and you can, I don't know if you can see, yeah, you can see that there. I've still got a ways to go to get it small enough to fit my 5 8 inch diameter. <clears throat> well, come in here. And of course, when I'm doing this uh, for one that I'm actually going to use, I do take more time. I'm going at this one pretty quick here. But again, we curve it around here. <coughs> Get rid of this wood. Because all this, all this other wood basically is just in the way. I guess it reminds me of carving in that way. Is any, how many people have gotten some carving tools and done some carving after Les's demo last time? Some people get started on that, a few. Uh, we've gotten some tools that haven't started on it, but you know the difference between wood turners and wood carvers. Wood carvers have to have their wood sit still while they work on it. Turners can do it while it's moving. I'm just uh, taking it down, getting it uh, closer here. Still got all the way around there to get it a little smaller. And I don't want to go too, too much of an angle there across it. That is probably going to be a notch, and we'll see if I can get that out of there. Another slight dif disadvantage when you're using a, a scraper like this. Let's see if we've got too bad of a, a notch there. Yeah, there's a piece there that you can see, but... We'll go with that for now. Now the trick that you want to do when you're getting down here, obviously I'm, I'm working my way in this way and in this way. Eventually they're going to meet up. And 
if you're not careful, the ring goes flying. Uh, you're all safe because I know from experience when uh, the ring goes flying, what it does is it drops down and spins this way. So it won't go that way. <clears throat> How many times has it done that? Right? Well, over 50% so far. <laughs> we will see what happens today. If you're careful and going not too quickly at it, then uh, you can hear it when it gets close. You can s hear the change in the sound. And what you want to do in getting that is as far eventually it is going to come off and you can imagine I am going to have rings like these that I have just taken off I don't know if you can see it in the demo but you can see the ridge here that is left and that's that's on this one as well you want to have that out as far as possible rather than straight in the center because I want to get rid of that and the farther out that it is the easier it is to get to when we turn it around and do it on uh, when I get there now as I'm working my way around here it gets a little bit difficult to get inside here with with this and get a, a curve on it you can get up in there only so far and then things get in the way. You see that's getting pr pretty close. I'll take it down a little bit more. And what I'm going to do in order to get in there like I mentioned is I've made another little tool to uh, round it off and get, get down in there. That's getting pretty close. So we will go at it with that. And this one is going to have that notch in it from, from hitting it there. But what uh, tool I've, I've come up with <laughs> Just went and got an 88 cent screwdriver and cut a 5 8 inch diameter round right there. Let's see if I can get it so that you can see it over the, uh, uh, there. And uh, the, what really needs to be sharpened, it's a little bit challenging to sharpen, but the edge that needs to be sharpened is the outside edge, primarily. Because you're not, <coughs> you're not cutting in, you're actually <coughs> Excuse me. You're, you're actually cutting the wood away from it on the outside. So that helps. It, it, it doesn't hold an edge real long before you've got to sharpen it again. You know, so it's, it's just like another scraper. So you develop a burr on, on both sides so that you can do that and, and get it fairly sharp here. <coughs> All that I use that for then basically is in this part to just round that a little bit more there. <coughs> and you can see I can get the wood away. You can see that. So that is, is just to help a little bit. I mean, you, you could do it without this. You wouldn't have to have it. But I thought it'd be interesting to have a ring tool, so I made one. So that helps a little bit there. Now I'm going to say that I am close enough that way. It's still not going to come off, but uh, that's what I'm going for next is I want to part this off. Now comes the tricky part. See if we can do it. 
in here. Not there yet. What's, what's really nice, I've had it happen a few times, where I get just to the right place and I can just take it off. There we go. <clears throat> we got it right to the spot where it was pretty thin. So we're going to look at this later this piece here. We've got a leftover piece of wood and I'm just going to take it off here and we'll come back to that because right now what we need to do is get this edge off that, that got left on there We're gonna, so that we can get it round again. And what I use to do that is a Longworth chuck. You can use, you can use coal jaws as well, but a uh, handy tool. I got this one from Hammer, CoolHammer.com. Uh, Ron Brown's, he, he makes these. And what I'm going to do is uh, turn it around, put it on there and get it centered so that I can get to the inside. I'm done. I, I should have said along the way here, if when this was still attached, I would have at that point taken out the sandpaper and gotten everything sanded down that I could get to. It's a lot easier to sand when it's on the lathe like that. Get it to that point, then part it off, and then I've only got this section that I'm going to have to work on to get that off. Now with these, let me find this here. It is still down, or it, it, it sinks way down in too far. I want it up, elevated some. So I just took some shower board and made some spacers, basically, so that I could get it elevated up off of there. Get a good go at it. <clears throat> now all you need to do with this, you, you tighten it in, finger tight, that way, and then just start tightening these up as you would a, the lug nuts on a car tire. You want to do them opposite so that it moves it, it doesn't move around much because you want it to end up centered. So all I'm doing at this point is just getting them so that it's, it's snug. I'm not tightening them up yet. I'm just getting them so, all snug so they're touching and we're in good shape there. All right. Need this to be open a little bit more. Helps to have three hands. So you can hold everything together. Do these not? I might have to switch to my other jaws here. No, that works. There we go. There we go. Okay. Now, put all these back in here. Get this back in here and uh, get them snugged up again. While I'm doing this, anybody, anybody here see the movie Fargo? A few people. The lead role in that was William Macy. He's a woodturner. So we've got a, a movie star woodturner. 
Now I look at it to see if it's centered and it's, it's coming along well. So I'm going to tighten the, the rest of them up there. With this, you can't run it too fast. Everybody says not to run them over 600 RPM. <clears throat> so I will go with that. And I just realized I did all of that without, I forgot my, uh, my mask that's back there on the table. Yep, nobody reminded me. Thanks. See if I get hurt. Are you an AAW member? <clears throat> yep. I, I have, it's kind of hard to see through my mask because of this mark in front. I need to get a new cover and that's because something hit it. So it protected me. It was, uh, it was worth wearing that day. There was a piece of bark that came off. All right. So we'll run it at about 600. And basically do the same thing. Just use... I that too low. Well, you can see why it's better to have that, that edge out as far as you can. So that way it's easy to get to here and you can turn it off and go for getting it round. And you don't have to get way in there close to the Longworth chuck or the uh, shower board. So we got that pretty well round. And that's really all that was required of that. So it's a lot of to do for a short amount of, of work there. So then you just loosen them to get it back out of there. There we go. So that's a a ring that I could then take over to the bandsaw and I would cut it in half and then of course cutting it in half I still have to figure out how to attach it to these you know the ends to these pieces that go on here this uh, this candelabra actually let me take this off while I'm doing this. It's made up of 17 different pieces. Uh, counting these as four because I cut them in half that way. So what I do is I take this over to the bandsaw, cut it, cut it in half, and then I need to drill holes in the end of each of those. Over there. There you can see the holes. See which camera is going here. Um, and so then I've got the other pieces. So I'll all I did was I wanted some something that could hold one of these pieces. So I've I've got interchangeable parts here that uh, what are we doing here? There we go. Interchangeable end pieces so that I can take and stick this up in through there when it's opened. Like that. And of course I drilled that hole with the, the uh, Jacob's chuck. So the hole is centered. And it also holds it so that this is nice and flush this way so that uh, the holes will be nice and straight. <clears throat> and if it was metal, I think it would be a little better because it would be more firm than uh, the plywood, but it, it still works. And I took this then and uh, I have a reverse Morse taper that can screw into another chuck and just mounted it in the end of uh -oh, 
This is going to run a slide too well. Yeah. Uh, so that it can hang, hang on to it, then put the uh, Jacob's chuck in over here and drill my hole. So that's what I've got for a way to do that and how I, I drilled those holes. Um, then the other part, well, so what I did with each of those, I'll, I'll explain that, was just took a piece of dowel. You could make the dowel if you wanted to as well. But, uh, you know, these ended up just getting turned as typical spindle turning, giving the, the shape to them and everything that is there. But I put a, a hole on, on the bottom here and threaded that onto a bottle stopper mandrel so that I could turn it. And then that hole is still just needs to be drilled out just a little bit more, three-eighths of an inch, so that the dowel will fit up in there. And I've got just a little piece of the dowel that would go in there and then would go into the end of the ring. Another piece then is this middle piece that has four holes in it to connect all of these two. The same, same thing is going on there where I've got a dowel going in between each one of those. And for that, again, it's just spinning, uh, turning a, a piece of spindle turning. And then using the, the stops on the lathe, most lathes have built into them a uh, index. Yeah, I'm over 50 as well. <laughs> so it's hard to remember these words. Uh, the, the, it's an index, indexing system so that uh, I could get them exactly 90, every 90 degrees a hole there and put the dowel in there and, it, and have it hold this. So basic things like that. Yeah? How deep do you usually go with your barrel? The holes are about three-eighths of an inch deep and the dowels are three-eighths of an inch. So, you know, just enough, whatever you think you need there to uh, hold it. And that uh, is kind of how that all works. Putting it all together with a dowel there and, uh, and a cup. A cup there and you, you've got that piece all put together. Clever, right? Does that all make sense? Yeah. I didn't track it. Uh, it took a lot more time than it should have for the first one because I was experimenting. Experimenting a lot, uh, coming up with different ideas and ways to do things. I wanted it to look the same, you know, look the same both above and below the, uh, this middle part, you know, to have it shaped in there and, and have the cups go in that way. Um, I had this middle piece, or the, the, the pedestal. At first, we were going this way with it. And uh, my daughter and I were, were looking at it, and uh, I just took it and flipped it this way and went, wow, that looks a lot better. Pull, pull it back just a little bit, Rob. Pull back forward. Oh, okay, there, there we go. Yeah, I first had it this way. And so sometimes you just start experimenting, and I made it in lots of pieces because when you're starting out and, and doing things, you make mistakes. The smaller the piece you make a, a mistake on, the smaller piece you have to do over again. So, uh, yeah, that, that was my, my thinking there. So some of these, uh, you know, like the cups, I, may, I ended up making 12 cups to get five I liked. Several of them cracked because, again, it was green wood. And uh, so I got cracks in them and had to get rid of those, but I ended up with five that were good and, and went with those. Any other questions on that part? Yes. I, I used water locks. I put water locks. I finished before putting it together because obviously it'd be hard to get in there and sand and buff and, and all of that between each coat. So put the water locks on the pieces, got everything together, and then glued it all up and put it together. How big is the top or the candle going about two inches or inch and a half? Uh, the width of this here? Yeah. 
this two and a sixteenth. Yeah, yeah. That wasn't necessarily planned out that way, but the first one I got that I liked, okay, now I've got to match it. It's two and a sixteenth. Some nice things came out. This is one and three eighths inch down to the center of that bead, and it's one and three eighths inch in diameter. So some things just, just came out nicely working that way. I just used tight bond um, original glue on that to put it together. No, I just did it to, by hand and with a, a caliper. Uh, this this guy here, and uh, just coming out with what it was and putting putting those on there. You know, knowing what my measurements were at that point, then measuring it out and uh, using the parting tool down at each point to go down to two and sixteenth there, one and three eighths there, and one inch here. You know, and each each piece, and then just shaping it to get to where those places were. All right, now I said we were going to get back to this. It's a leftover part from that, and uh, we ought to be able to make use of it. Yeah, I don't want to waste it.